So how you do have a strong center? You do had uh, that CA that has been passed by parliament, right? But uh, these states have referred, many states have passed the resolution against implementation of CA and NPR. So how center could have resorted to article 365 and they could have invoked, center could have invoked, uh, applied precedent rule in the state passing resolution means constitution position. I am saying that if any state uh, fails to or refuses to recognize these parliamentary legislation or implementation of parliamentary that would be considered as failure of constitutional machinery mind you under article 365 and center does have every right to invoke article 356 right but has center done kerala passed it right has center invoked article 365 or 356 no because political environment does not allow it Right? So, where is this strong center? Ayushman Bharat scheme, a scheme related to health scheme that has been refused to be executed by West Bengal government. They say that we do have our own model of this health and that was completely political reason let me tell you. Hello everybody. So, in this video we are going to discuss federal system, a chapter that is chapter 2 in part 2 of Lakshmi Khan. So, let us move to the next slide and let us discuss that how we have planned to cover this chapter. So, if you can see we have divided this chapter mainly into 5 verticals. So, in the first vertical we will discuss what is federal, what is the meaning of federal, then what is this federalism, what is this quasi federal, what is this unitary, mind you all these are nothing but form of governments, right. Thereafter what is this essential test of federal? federalism if you take us model of federalism they have their own components so us model of federalism cannot be applied to each and every country if you apply us model of federalism to any country perhaps there would be around two three countries alone that would stand this test and that's why political scientists came up with different other tests to decide whether a country's government is federal or not right so those things we'll discuss in this second vertical then why federalism is mandatory in Indian context right India's geography is huge right you have starting from Jammu Kashmir to Kanyakumari then from Gujarat to Arunachal Pradesh right so our geographical expense is huge then we are a multilingual society if you see Europe whole of the Europe has been divided on the linguistic and racial basis then we are multi-religious uh, society again so if you see our neighbors our partition had happened on the basis of religion right then in third vertical why federalism is mandatory in India's context so if you see India's geographical expense from Jammu Kashmir to Kanyakumari then you have from Gujarat to Arunachal Pradesh it's huge right only in the states like Uttar Pradesh or Rajasthan or Maharashtra three four European country can be accommodated so how has India kept itself intact right we are a multilingual society we have more than 1500 dialects across India right 22 official languages recognized official languages in the eighth schedule we are a multi-religious society we are multicultural society so how these things are important and how these things have played role for having federalism in India what would have been the condition of India if we would not have opted for a federal form of government rather if we would have opted for a British model that is unitary form of government see it's very easy for a small nation to adopt a unitary form of government but it's very very difficult in democracy for a country like uh, India or United States of America which has vast geographical expense and many kind of races or multilingual society to have unitary form of government. So in that context we will discuss this third vertical that why federalism is important in India's context. Then features, what are the features that uh, proves that India is committed to the values of federalism. So apart from traditional uh, values of federalism, we will discuss that how our constitution has appreciated the values of uh, federalism. Thereafter in last leg we will discuss MCQs rather not discuss I will expect you to attempt those MCQs right. So after having discussed our plan to cover this chapter let us enter into the first vertical and that is what is this federalism or unitary. So if you can see on the screen you have two words that is federal and unitary form of government. So depending on the way power is shared between different political units right. So in Indian context we do have primarily two political units the first is union and the second is 
state right although the third year of government has also been created by 73rd or 74th amendment but that is not the scope of this video as far as this video is concerned we will consider only two uh, tiers of government that is union and state right so, so depending on how different political units shares power with each other right that decide whether a government is federal or unitary right so if the division between these two units or more than two units is through constitutional means the power sharing between two different political units right in india's case it's union and state right so depending on how these two political units or more than two political units as well share power with each other right that decide whether a country is federal or not right whether it will be federal or unitary so let us get into slide and let us discuss this in better manner right so federalism is a system of government first we are discussing federalism and thereafter unitary right so federalism is a system of government where power is divided between different political units through constitution so two components of this definition there should be two or more political subunits right as i told you that in indian context it's union and state right there may be third tier as well so two or more than uh, two political subunits the second requirement is that the power division should be through constitution right so in our case we do have seventh schedule article 246 where union list is there state list is there and there is concurrent list as well right so power has been divided uh, between union and state through constitution so if there is two or more than two political subunit and the second requirement is that the power division or power sharing between these political unit is through constitution then that government will be called federal so if we follow this definition we can proudly call ourselves federal right but on the other hand if we try to define this unity government right this is actually a pictorial representation of what we saw in the definition so you have this central unit that is union in our case if we take indian example so central unit that is union and then different regional units at the lower level right just because hierarchically these units or states are at lower pedestal does not mean that these people are satellite or agencies of these central unit it's just that there is a vertical division of power that's all otherwise in a federal system of government what you see is that the power between these two units or more than two units if they are exist right so the power sharing is through constitutional mean means it's not that if the states are vertically at lower pedestal then the center will make laws and center will uh, delegate any kind of law if center is delegating uh, pass to these regional units or a state that form of government will not be called federal in this diagram if you can see right the power sharing between these two political units that is center and state is through constitutional means and in indian and in indian case it's article 246 or the seventh schedule and that's why i call that india is a federal country let us take another example of a unitary form of government that you see on the this side of the screen so let us take example of britain so in unitary form of government you will see that most of time there would be national government only right you won't find these regional governments at the lower pedestal as we saw in the uh, what you call federal system of government even if there is any country which has this regional unit or the state government the power distribution between those two units will not be by constitution the power sharing so for example in britain you do have city of london so that city elects its mayor as well right now the mayor name i cannot correctly remember if you guys don't let me know so they do have post of mayor which is who once elected is responsible for the development and to some extent law and order problem as well but mind you whatever development functions or law and order function that is vested in the post of mayor right that is by delegation from the center right i hope you do understand the difference between devolution and delegation if not it's your job today that you will let me know the difference between decentralization devolution and delegation as far as delegation is concerned delegation is nothing but transfer of power from 
upper unit it happens in organization it does not only apply in this unitary and federal form of government alone right it happens in organization as well that i as a boss if i do not have time right uh, i can transfer my some of my functions to my junior and ask him okay you on now onwards you keep looking into that area but final control ultimately will lie in me right i am transferring this uh, responsibility but ultimate authority will lie with me so that is what is happening so if uh, the city of mayor is doing certain functions certain development functions or certain law and order function it's not that the central unit has completely given that functions to that mayor that power can be taken at any time so what you saw is the difference between this federal model and the unitary model is that the here the power sharing between the different political units is by constitutional means and uh, center cannot take away its power state's power at its will but that is not the case here here whatever certain amount of power that has been given to a uh, lower political unit that can be taken by central unit at its will because the power sharing all the power lies with central unit right and whatever power has been delegated to him right final control will lie with central unit so i hope you do have clarity on what you call this const a federal system of government and unitary system of government let us move to the next step and let us see what are the countries right which have this federal form of government and then unitary form of government so if you can see on this side of the screen you have united states of america uh, australia switzerland india argentina brazil so russia even claims that they are federal they are following this federal form of government while on this side of the screen if you can see right these countries follow unitary form of government so you have japan uh, our colonial master that is united kingdom then france china italy so all these most of these norway spain most of these european nation what they follow is unitary form of government right and when i am saying that most of the european country right don't make uh, wrong choices you have russia here right which is following half of the russia lies in europe right so russia here right which is european country which is considered european country but they are they claim to be federal government right so that's about the difference between federal form of government and unitary form of government on this continuum of federal and unitary there is one uh, another form of government that is quasi federal and a word that has been a terminology that has been used for indian government by kc bhere right that we'll see in this course of video so uh, on this continuum from federal to unitary you will find a third form of government that is Fe, uh, quasi federal right that is not that federal as well that is not unitary either so they lie on the middle of that continuum let us move to the next slide and let us see uh, a definition uh, definition that you can write in means as well because whatever we have discussed so far it was in lame language right it was for our understanding of the concept so if you have to write what is this federalism in the means the kind of language that you have to use is here right so it's constitutional fission i hope you know the difference between fission and fusion right but that is a science topic i'm not going to elaborate fission is simply uh, splitting of nuclei right fusion combination fission splitting so constitutional fission right means fission of power it is talking about so constitutional fission or constitutional distribution of power among different uh, vertical subunits of the government right let me get off the frame so that you can read it right and whenever see whenever i am on screen right it might be that things may not be visible so many a times i get off the screen so at that moment what you can do is you can pause the video you can read whole of the content right and thereafter you can concentrate on what i'm speaking and when i'm speaking make sure that your ears and mind remains active and when i am reading make sure that your eyes and mind mind is common in every case but ears and eyes right that would be like when i am off screen your ear eyes and when i am on screen right it's your ears that should remain because many a times you will find that most of the things i 
I also forget to put on the slide, but spontaneously by subconscious knowledge it comes out. So don't think that whatever has been put up on the slide, I'm teaching only that thing, right? I do not limit myself uh, to the slide itself. So make sure that what I'm speaking as well, you focus on that as well. And while making notes, right, you do not limit again yourself to the slide alone coming back to this topic right so we already have read this definition the second part of the definition we did not read so more the decentralization at the bottom more federal the country right i already told you that you need to google that is your homework the difference between devolution decentralization delegation delegation we already have discussed as far as devolution and decentral because decentralization word has come here as well right that's why i recommended you to google the difference between devolution decentralization delegation right so more the decentralization as at the bottom more federal the country what does this mean right so actually the spirit of federalism is to push the power down vertical right so whatever uh, political subunits that you do have at lower level it suggests that lower levels because they are more closer to the people so they should have more power vis-a-vis -vis center right and that's what it is it is saying that more the decentralization at the bottom, more federal the country. And that's why you will see that United States of America is considered more federal than Indian states. And the reason is that constitutionally United States of America's state enjoy more power vis-a-vis -vis Indian state. Because if you see, they do not have anything called state list or residuary list. Their constitution does have only one list that is union list. And apart from whatever subject has been mentioned in union list, all the power belong to the state. While in our case, we do have union list, state list, concurrent list, whatever subject that has been mentioned in concurrent list, state can make law, union as well can make law, but in the concurrent list, center has overriding power. Apart from that, besides that, there is one more list that is residuary. So whatever, although this list, residuary list is not mentioned in what you call uh, seventh schedule, but whatever residuary parts are there, that will ultimately lies with center. And even in center list, you will see that more number of subject has been mentioned in central list vis-a-vis -vis state list. So what you see is center is more in part when it comes to state. And that's why uh, what I was referring to that USA, United States of America, following this principle is more powerful vis-a-vis -vis India in terms of federalism, right? So I hope this line you would have understood more the decentralization at the bottom, more federal the country, right? Thereafter, coming to the Indian context, if you see, right, if you know uh, federalism, uh, we claim ourselves, if uh, you ask me a question whether India is a federal country or not, right? Although we are going to test on various parameters that whether India is a federal country or not but if you ask me in binaries is india a federal country i would say yes but this surprisingly this word federalism or federal has nowhere been used in indian constitution either directly or indirectly right so word federal is expressly nowhere mentioned in the indian constitution while describing the nature of indian polity if you remember we had read article 1 in chapter 5 that is union and territory so while describing the nature of polity article 1 describes india as union of state and not as a federation right and when dr ambedkar was ask that why you have although you claim dr ambedkar as well claimed that india is a federal country right so he was asked this question that although you claim that india is a federal country but you have duplicitly not used that federation word or federal word into article 1 while describing india's polity so he cited the reason listen understand that india's formation has not been as like united states of america when united states of america got its independence right 13 or 14 of the state at that moment on those eastern coast those states came together they pulled their sovereignty whatever uh, subjects that were necessary to bring uniformity those subjects was given to the union rest of uh, the subjects were kept with the state so what you see is what the point i am trying to make that in their case it's state with states which decided to come together right but that was not the case in indian scenario when we got the independence we were functioning 
truly like a unitary state. If you remember Indian Government Act 1935, as per Government of India Act 1935, which envisioned a all India Federation, but that could not materialize, right? Because princely states refused to join that federation. If you have read that uh, provisions of uh, Government of India Act 1935, uh, you would know right that princely states had refused to join so we could never become that federation which that act had envisioned and what we continued functioning as was a completely unitary state right so you had prince even at the time of independence you saw that various princely states although as far as provinces were concerned i hope you know the difference between uh, provinces and states right when i'm saying state right now right state is referring to the princely state and when i am referring to the provinces uh, you may think of central provinces united provinces which were part of that british india right so even the state princely state when we got the independence they were trying to negotiate as much hard they can with sardar patel as well and uh, jinnah as well right so they were not readily agree most of the, the controversial states like hyderabad jammu and kashmir junagar all these states were hard uh, negotiating with sardar patel right so what I, the point i am trying to make is that indian formation was not like united states of america's formation where indian federation is not result of an agreement among the state which was the case in united united states of america's states came together through an agreement a common agreement but that was not the case right and that's the point that dr ambedkar is making while responding to the question that was raised that why you have not used the word federal then uh, in federation you give the right to seed to the state and that right to seed as well has not been provided and, and that's why uh, when the question was asked about duplicity of dr ambedkar i would say that that was not duplicity that was a master stroke uh, that was brilliancy while skipping that word federation and using this word brilliantly this union of state into article one right and that's why we need to appreciate these people our founding father the hard work that they did while framing or enacting our constitution right so what is the conclusion of discussing this is india not a federal country the question that we, we should be raising see whatever information right now you have about indian federation whether india is a fed you already know because i have responded that india is a federal federal country but leave that aside right have that knowledge aside for next 20 or 30 minutes whatever this video will take or until we reach to the point that essential test portion leave that information means whatever assumptions you have set about india's federalism leave that aside let us discuss let us discuss point by point to test whether india is a federation or not so after having discussion when in your constitution the word federal is missing when your article 1 describe india as a union of state not as a federation how can you call india a federal country what test you will put it through right so let us move to the next slide and if you see ncrt right uh, chapter 2 class 10 right if you uh, read that chapter it is talking about federalism so there are seven parameters that ncrt has suggested to test whether a government is federal or not so what are those seven tests and along with every test will keep taking that portion whether india stand on that test indian government stand on that test or not so two or more level of government that is the first test of federalism right so yes we do have two or more levels of government we do have government of union that is government of india and then various assemblies various state we do have governments right so yes on this test we stand out then jurisdiction of each tire is constitutionally defined so yes seventh schedule article 246 we do have so on this test as well we stand out then fundamental provisions of the constitution can't be changed unilaterally right so yes this is also true the fundamental provision when it is saying it is saying about those provisions which cannot be changed unilaterally or those provisions which impact state interest as well right so you have right you have uh, various method of changing the constitution some provision can be changed by simple majority as well few provision can be changed by special majority and in other provision which impacts federal features of indian constitution in that case half of the legislatures 
consent is also required and that's what it is talking about the fundamental provisions of the constitution we already have that basic structure doctrine evolved by Keshwan and Bharti case in 1973 and legislature although is empowered to change any portion of constitution except that basic structure so keep that in mind that there are certain provision in which state involvement is also needed and there are certain provision that has been evolved through basic structure right federation is one such word or one such concept which is part of basic structure and these two parameters or these two things right cannot be changed by government of india or the parliament so on this test as well we stand out thereafter there is a code to interpret there should be a code to interpret the constitution so yes uh, in our case we do have supreme court we do have high court which can interpret constitution impartially so four tests we have read so far and all those four tests we have stood out then each tier has separate jurisdiction similar thing right almost similar thing so here the constitutionally defined and here separate jurisdiction so yes if health has been given to the state health matter matters related to health will be decided by state alone if law and order function has been given to the state through constitution in the seventh schedule right they will continue to have legislation in that area right uh, if defense is the area of union state will not overstep and try to legislate on the defense if external affairs is unions matter uh, external affairs will remain they will be in part to legislate on the external affairs so this test as well safeguard unity of the country yet fulfills subunits aspiration right so that is also true right it's a debate between that okay to what extent unions responsibility is to safeguard unity of the country and to what extent I means this is a debate between the fulfilling the state inspiration aspiration sorry and then fulfilling these uh, country's safeguard goals right so that debate will delve into right thereafter source of revenue of each tire is constitutionally or clearly defined so that is also a right provision so in constitution those taxation financial uh, section when center state relation will be dealing with right so in that section you will see that state revenue source has been clearly defined as well although it is tilted in favor of union but when it is saying that yes whether it is clearly defined or not so it is clearly defined so on all these seven tests right we stand out so uh, if we have to take these ncrt's parameters we can claim ourselves to be federal but stop right because now we are going to compare it with other models as well models of united states of america that the path they have followed or the practice they have developed over a period of time to call a country federal right let us move to the next slide oh here you do have two concepts coming together federation and holding together federation although we will keep this uh, these two terminologies that NCRT again because these two terminologies were in the same chapter as well and that's why I thought of discussing this but because this will uh, disturb our flow so we will keep the discussion on these two terminologies for a later stage so forget these two things as of now so where we were we were discussing that okay on NCRT CRT's parameters of federalism we stood out now we are going to compare ourselves or our federalism from United States of America's model right so federal parameters from United States of America so on NCRT we stood out we could have called ourselves federal but let us compare ourselves with this United States model right so the first thing sorry so the first thing is that state can also initiate constitutional amendments so this is one extra power that uh, we in India have not extended to our state right so state there in that case right we have read this in salient features lecture as well right so if you don't know this is a new information that along with the national government state has also been in power to make or suggest constitutional amendment according to the United States of 
Const America's constitution, right? So, and what is this federalism, spirit of federalism that states should be empowered or lower political units should be empowered to the extent it is possible. So, state is more empowered and that's why I was talking about in the earlier slide that US will be called more federal vis-a-vis -vis India because state in their case is more empowered. So, here the first example that you saw or the first parameter to test the extent of or the depth of federalism that you saw though in the first test you saw that state in the United States of America can initiate constitutional amendment. What is the second test? So, USA judiciary is most powerful and this is the one requirement of federalism, right? Basic requirement that you need to have a court and that had been suggested by NCRT as well, right? So, you should have a federal court which could judge if there is any kind of dispute between various political units like union and state, there should be an impartial judiciary which could interpret the constitution and can resolve the dispute in an impartial way. So, USA judiciary is most powerful organ not only in United States but across the world, right? Uh, if you see uh, the nature of organs of the state, right, in our case, it's almost balanced. Parliament vis-a-vis -vis judiciary is almost balanced but in their case, the judiciary is most powerful. Right? And uh, it is so powerful, although this is again not the scope, that information that I am not the scope of this chapter, but let us discuss. So, USA judiciary is too, so powerful that it is called the third chamber of legislature, right? So, the second test, third test is that a bicameral legislature they have. So, they have this upper house, they have this lower house, right? Then each state is represented in equal mum, uh, numbers in upper house. Each state has equal representation in upper house. They, they do have 50 states and 100 member in senate. Senate is their upper house, right? So, two members from each state. So, equality of representation that is missing in our Rajya Sabha. In our Rajya Sabha, the representation again has been given on the basis of population. So, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat, these major states get major chunk of Rajya Sabha seat in the from the fourth schedule while uh, poor states like when I am saying poor means I am saying in terms of geography. So, these smaller states like Goa and Manipur they have just one one representation. So, we do not have this equality of representation in upper house. Thereafter, states tarry good territorial integrity is protected and this protection is constitutional. So, unlike in Indian case, we are using article 2 and article 3, you can, a union can uh, create these states, new state or change the boundary or change the name at its will and that too by simple majority, that is not the case. So, states boundaries are completely, completely protected. Their sovereignty is immune from union's touch then only union's power is defined in the constitution, no concurrent or residuary list, right? So, this is again how you empower your states, right? In our case, as we discussed, residuary power lies with union and whatever is mentioned in concurrent list, even their union has overriding power while legislation, right? Then they have independent judiciary, then dual citizenship they provide. So, that is also one difference. We do have concept of single citizenship, who should be citizen or not, right? That is not in the control of state. If state wants to decide that a particular uh, person or a particular family has done something treacherous job, right? And they need not to be part of my state, that kind of uh, option is not available to the Indian states, right? Then written constitution uh, need not to be explained. So, these are the parameters that has been suggested by United or not if suggested if a country uh, benchmark has to be set by US, these are the benchmark that US model is setting. Now, if you see these uh, things in red, right? these things are missing from the most of country and uh, our concern right now is not most of countries, right? Our con concern right now is uh, with India. So, when you compare these parameters in Indian context, you will find that we do not have these dual citizenship concept. We do not give equality of representation to each state while allocating Rajya Sabha seat. Then 
union spar is not only defined we do have that concurrent list that we just discussed and then residuary uh, uh, parts in favor of union then states territorial integrity is not protected article 2 article 3 article 4 you already know we have discussed this in chapter 5 then state can also initiate constitute in our case that is also missing so on ncrt's test we were a federal country but when you see that from US model when we compare ourselves, we fail these many tests of federalism. But the point is that why should we follow this US model of federalism, right? Because uh, if in the world, if you see these many countries, these in parity or green it is, I guess green, right? So these countries in green claim them to be federal, right? You have United States, you do have Canada, then most of these Brazil, Argentina, most of these South American countries, then you do have some country, few countries in Africa as well, then Russia, India, Pakistan, uh, then this Australia, then you do have these countries in South East Asia as well. Those claim to be federal country, but when you compare the polity of these countries, other countries apart from USA, right, from these tests, the test or the parameter that has been suggested by United States of America's model, only two or three countries like the Switzerland and Australia will stand to the test, other countries will fail the, the test. So what we call, what we do describe to these countries, will they be called unitary states? No, so there should be a common ground, right? There should be some, so political scientists, various political scientists like uh, Granvin Austin, right? Casey Bhere, they came up with a uh, few agreed principle that, okay, if a country's polity or if we, a country's government have these features, at least these are the minimum features. Of if a country is fulfilling, the uh, government is fulfilling these conditions, that country or that government can be called federal. So let us see these tests and let us see whether we stand to these tests or not on NCRT's test, although NCRT is our book alone, right? So uh, we should not be proud that, okay, from our parameter, if we stood, we can be called federal. So these parameters has been suggested by various, agreed by various political expert, political science experts. So let us see what parameter do they suggest and whether uh, we stand on their parameter or not. So the first parameter is the division of power between center and units, right? So that parameter we stand. So we do have division of power between center and state through seven schedule. Then each unit derive their power from common source and that can be only constitution. So yes, we do have constitution and the power to the state and union has been given from the constitution. So that portion is also fine. Thereafter, there should be a federal court which should act as a guardian of the constitution. So yes, Supreme Court we do have and if there is any question on the co uh, constitutional validity of any acts enacted by either by assembly or parliament right uh, that uh, that legislation is dragged into the court thereafter if there is any dispute over the center's power although those are clearly defined but if there is any kind of dispute between central or union's power over legislation and state power over legislation such cases as well you will see that those are often dragged into federal court you had recently this ca uh, citizenship amendment act landing on most of the act uh, nowadays uh, even if it is remotely controversial you will see those cases often landing into what you call supreme court so yes we do have a federal court then the fourth parameter the or the fourth test is the supremacy of constitution and that should be the result right so yes we do have supremacy of constitution right and there are portions although you can argue that yes there are certain provisions right that are very simple that can be amended by simple majority but then there are certain provision which can be amended only by a special majority and that too by uh, involvement of state right so on this test as well i'll say that yes we do stand out thereafter two sets of government that constitutionally coordinate with each other so two sets of rather we do have three tire of government right the third tire that is panchayati raj is in its evolutionary period right so as far as the two sets of government is concerned we do have union and we do have state right so at least on these five tests that has been agreed or broadly agreed by various political expert we do stand out so can we call right from ncrt test click 
then US tests on some of the test we failed, right? Thereafter, this uh, test that has been agreed by most political scientist experts on this test as well, we do get a check mark and the result is that now we can claim that yes, we are a federal country. So now, yes, we are a federal country, right? Thereafter, see the next slide and the third vertical that we had discussed that why federalism is necessary in India's context. Could not we have afforded with a unitary form of government that Britishers had given us, right? So remember until 1947 we already have discussed that we were acting completely like a unitary state, not acting means we were being governed on those unitary government lines, right? So this movement from unitary to federal, right? How and why, right? So let us see, see those were colonial masters, right? There was no objection how they were treating uh, to the multilingual society, multiracial society, multi society even if there were some infighting going on they did not have they did not care about human rights and uh, other democratic rights but when we got independent when we were framing our constitution and we when we were defining ourselves to be a democratic country we had to take many things into consideration so if you see uh, there are two major reasons uh, for us to be federal country right or federal government or to have opted federal polity and there were certain political reasons and there are certain moral reasons. So first let us discuss the political reasons behind having opted for a federal system of government. So let us see the first point. So we are a multicultural society. Uh, how multicultural? So if you see the people or the culture of the Northeast, uh, especially uh, to the people of Nagaland or Manipur, right? Their culture matches more with Myanmar people than Indian, but still they have decided to stay with us. They are part of Indian Union. And so it is very important that we do respect their custom. We do respect their laws. We do respect the lifestyle that they want to live, right? So we are a multicultural society and it is very important that in that multicultural society, every culture is equally respected. Then we do have a multilingual society. So we, you do have 22 official languages and that again signifies how lingually we are rich country, right? That you had to have 22 official languages, recognized uh, official languages in eight schedule, right? So we are a multilingual society. We do have more than 50 1500 dialects if you see countries in Europe right uh, most of the countries in Europe has been divided on the lines of language then we are multi-religious society right if you see our neighbors right Pakistan and Bangladesh rather our division our separation happened or partition happened because of this religious reason there are more than 57 uh, countries across the world which who recognizes constitutionally mind you constitutionally themselves to be a Islamic country there are certain European countries which constitutionally again define themselves as a Christian country so in that context so the point is that on religious line they have identified themselves but we have almost every religion in our country and we have not defined ourselves to a particular religion. We have never means there may be some political statement from here and there that we want Hindu Rashtra or we want that Muslim Rashtra but that has not ever happened right as far as government policy is concerned does not matter uh, how a political party has been and what their manifesto has been irrespective of the manifesto no government has ever claimed that uh, our constitution should be amended in a way that it gives preference to a particular religion so if you have to keep our country right if you see the geographical expense of our country from jammu kashmir to kanyakumari so if you have to keep where uh, as same example that i will be referring so you can accommodate three or four large sized a European country in states like UP and Maharashtra, right? So when you have to keep this multicultural society, when you have to keep multilingual society, when you have to keep this multi-religious society, when you have to keep this vast expense, vast geographical country together and intact, what you will have to do is you will have to have federal policies in place, you will have to have federal government in place than a unitary government because in a unitary government unit the tendency of unitary government is to appropriate power right and when you appropriate power concentrate power at one place right 
you cannot function like a multicultural society you would be ignoring uh, that cultural values of a uh, minorities right uh, and that in that case your country cannot be kept intact we will be like those smaller countries of european nation right that's why we need to respect the values that is suggested by federal system or federal government right thereafter the second category moral reasons we were talking about so there are certain moral reasons political reason we already have discussed that these were actually compulsions right uh, if you don't want to agree to these philosophies or uh, values uh, suggested by federalism you want to be unitary no issues just that you will not be able to remain intact in the form that we are today but there are certain means they were political reasons now there are certain moral reasons as well so if you claim yourself or as a union or as a country or as a constitution if we claim ourselves to be democratic uh, society so a democratic society the basic theme behind democratic society is power sharing you share your power with minority group you share your power with uh, weaker social societies right weaker social groups right and that is the basic theme behind democracy power sharing right and power sharing what it does is that it empower those minority uh, let them feel that they are also active participants in democracy they are not passive beneficiary of democratic system right and that's why this is the moral reason i would say that we should follow the values of federalism or we should have federal because only in federal form of government that these people people from minorities people from weaker so social group so whatever reservation we do have extended in lok sabhas for sc and sts right whatever uh, reservation that we are extending under article 16 that is just a moment so these were the moral reasons behind having a federal polity or a federal government right so the next question that rises is that has india done enough to accommodate the political demands of these weaker section and social group or communities so let us move to the next slide and respond to this question right so has india done enough to accommodate political demands of the social group or the features or the next uh, the other question in other format the question can be asked is that the features that reflects india as commitment to federalism so if you see these articles uh, article 370 we had that we have just abrogated right otherwise that could also have been a feature or our appreciation of values of federalism but just because that has been amended so we have not taken that into example so let us start with this article 371 if you are aware about article 371 a and j a to j right there are certain states like manipur nagaland assam then there are some states in mainland india as well right there we do have recognizing their special practices their custom we have given some special protection to those social groups and those states under these articles or sub articles right that we'll discuss so i already gave you an essence this is so this is nothing these articles is nothing this is our appreciation of the their special custom and their special values thereafter article 263 interstate council that will uh, study in next chapter so interstate council from that platform center and state uh, sit together right and they can air they can air their opinion about various issues if they do have issues with their neighboring state or if they do have issues with what you call center right so from that platform they can, they can air their opinion or suggestions so thereafter zonal council again four five states in different zones like north zone south zone so these zones again that will will study next chapter so these things are nothing but this reflects indian constitution commitment to the federalism we are recognizing the special problem of different states or recognizing some problem of the different states we are giving them a platform where they can discuss it right where they can discuss their problem then article 246 that is seventh schedule so seventh schedule as well reflects our commitment to the federalism then federation in 1993 in sr bomai case was recognized as a basic feature so this federation 
cannot be destroyed so being part of uh, this basic structure what it essentially means is that this federalism or federation as a concept cannot be taken back or cannot be changed by parliament then article 29 29 and 30 cultural and educational rights of minorities or multilingual people so this is again nothing but this reflects indian commitment indian constitutional commitment to the values of federalism although we'll discuss those traditional features that are constitution like dual polity bicameralism written constitution supremacy of constitution so those uh, traditional feature we'll discuss but the other features that Lakshmi Kant hasn't mentioned but from my experience I thought of sharing it with you so these features are nothing but these reflect that yes we are committed to recognizing uh, the special rights the special claim over Indian state on of these minorities right of other groups right here you saw that the other state which had certain special problems some special customs so indian constitution has not ignored their demands indian constitution has appreciated demand and has tried to accommodate them as well and that was the answer of this question that he has features that reflect so these are these features that reflects india's commitment to the federalism let us move to uh, next slide and let us see power sharing model across the world right what are the power sharing models that different countries are opting so here we have taken two example example of england which will lie on this continuum of federal so here you do have continuum so on one side you have this most federal country thereafter lesser federal country less lesser federal country and on this side you have completely a unitary country right so here we on this continuum we have taken two example on federal side you do have united states of america which in today's circumstances in today's political environment that will be called most federal country while on unite unitary side we have taken example of britain although political environment in Bing uh, england right uh, vis a vis this unitary or the form of government is also evolved they have also started devolving the powers to lower unit but that is a process of evolution so as far as this chapter is concerned we'll keep that in unitary form of government at as well right so usa has been considered as most federal country the reason we already have seen why this country is called most federal while uh, seeing that us model of federalism so i need not to elaborate it as far as this unitary model of government again this this thing as well we have seen right that you do have union you do have subnational government and then metropolitan cities right but uh, we had seen that whatever part that these metropolitan cities or subnational government enjoy that power is delegated by the union and not constitutionally devolved and that's why this country has been called union right so the purpose of having this continuum on this slide is that you do have on the federal side us on this unitary side of this continuum you have united kingdom so where does india lies right so the answer is that india lies somewhere in between it is not as federal as united states of america but it is not as unitary as Britain either right so India will lie somewhere in between right because it does have certain federal features as well and certain unitary features as well and that has been the reason that why some few political scientists like KC Bhere he has said that India's polity or Indian government is federal in form but unitary in spirit and the word that it has used uh, to describe Indian government or Indian polity is quasi federal that it is not federal it is not unitary what it is is quasi federal right then Maurice Johnson has described Indian government or Indian polity as bargaining federalism right and it is because there are certain why they have called this in unitary spirit let us move to the next or why Maurice Johnson had to call India as a bargaining federalism so let us move to the next slide and let us see okay so Casey's very another comment on another chance was that Indian Union is unitary in spirit and whatever federal features are there it is just subsidiary right so his major emphasis is that Indian Union is unitary state with subsidiary federal feature right so whatever federal feature that we do have is subsidiary those are secondary right while we uh, the primarily we are a unitary state then a uh, federal state with subsidiary unitary feature right so what we should have been is 
federal state with subsidiary means lesser unitary feature but what we have is that more unitary feature and lesser sub uh, federal feature right so that was his statement and another chance so he described indian polity as quasi federal and while elaborating what this quasi federal is he says this so let us see let us move to the next slide and let us discuss that okay why india has been described as quasi federal state right so here on this side of the screen if you can see right these are federal features of the indian constitution right so why these has been called federal feature or, or why a particular uh, feature should be called federal so any feature that seems to be favoring state or seems to have a power balance with the state that feature will be called federal or any state and any state which uh, seems to favor union or tilted in favor of union that feature will be called unitary so we do have these many federal feature let us discuss these one by one and why these features are called what you call federal feature so you do have dual polity dual polity means you do have government in uh, at union level as well and state level as well which is keeping care of state as well so this is what you call a federal feature then you do have a rigid constitution so the second feature is that uh, india does have a rigid constitution and that rigid constitution has been described as uh, federal feature so why rigid uh, constitution can be described or has been described as a federal feature because if constitution has been rigid right uh, it cannot be changed unilaterally by union and if it cannot be changed without involvement of the state right then it seems to be favoring state right and that's why rigid constitution has been called a federal feature then seventh schedule seventh schedule is what seventh schedule is nothing but division of power it is talking about through seventh schedule article 246 right so seventh schedule has also been described as a federal feature because it talks about division of power or power sharing then independent judiciary so why independent judiciary has been described as federal feature because if you have independent if a, a state or if a nation has an independent judiciary whenever there is any kind of dispute between center and state it will act in an impartial manner if this judiciary has been set up by union and if it is not independent it might act as a loyal to union right so that is not the case we do have supreme court we do have high court and that the they do have independent existence right so whenever there is any kind of dispute arising out of anything right when states and union get into a feud they go to supreme court and their feud is resolved impartially and that's why this independent judiciary has been described as what you call federal feature then you do have written constitution so why written constitution should be a federal feature so written constitution is a federal feature because a uh, center or union cannot change it unilaterally right there is something written so it has to have through amendment any change has to have through amendment and that's why written constitution has been described as a federal feature then bicameralism so why bicameralism has been described as a federal feature so you do have a lower house that is Lok Sabha in Indian constitution and in upper house you do have council of state Rajya Sabha right so lower house is elected by people while the upper house is not directly elected by people there what you have is uh, representatives of the state right and uh, you do have people belonging to different parties and they are they have been chosen by regional parties and that's why they'll protect the interest in Rajya Sabha members are meant to protect interest of that particular state from where they belong right so in case if you have Dorak O'Brien right who belongs to uh, Trinamool party so from Bengal whatever members if uh, in Bengal Mamtadi is ruling right you will see that uh, in Rajya Sabha there would be more people from TMC right so the, what they will be protecting they won't be caring much about national interest they would what they would be concerned about state interest right and that's why the upper house if so if there is a bicameral legislature in any nation that nation is called federal and that is a required feature to be called federal government or federal polity because in upper house people or the elected people are coming from the state and they protect the interest of state alone right then supremacy of constitution so this is clearly understood that why supremacy of constitution is to be called a federal feature right 
thereafter let us move to this side of the screen and these features right so how many features are there in indian constitution uh, of belonging to the federal category so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 right so there are seven federal features in indian constitution and there are these many unitary features present in Indian constitution and that is why that comment. We will explain this that why these features has been called unitary feature right. So, you do have single constitution and that is why these number of unitary elements in Indian constitution that would have compelled Casey Bhere or Maurice Johnson to call it a bargaining federalism or that another comment right. So, you do have single constitution. So, in if you remember in a United States state as well does have right to have their own constitution in india we had this jammu and kashmir and mind you i am saying had right so after 5th of august that provision has been abolished so you do have this provision of single constitution right then single citizenship so in india state does not we already have uh, discussed this so state does not have right to decide that who will be their citizen and who will not be but in comparison with the united states state as well does have that right thereafter emergency power so why emergency power should be called a unitary feature because article 352 356 360 which talks about uh, financial emergency then uh, 356 you have president's rule that is also called alternatively states emergency and 352 national emergency so these em emergencies power has been called unitary feature because once imposed on the state like 356 right elected legislature can be dissolved right and that becomes the legislation in that state becomes domain of state right and that's why emergency provision because in during emergency all the control lies with center right or the administrator that has been elected by center so when uh, control is lying the legislative control or financial control is lying uh, with center so that element which have generated this condition right that element will of course be called unitary feature so that's why emergency parts of uh, union has been called uh, unitary feature then there is role of governor right so role of governor governor has been questioned at many occasion all on almost every occasion whenever in current political uh, vitiated situation right role of governor has come to be questioned whether at time of appointment so you had in 2014 as soon the new government came to the power you would have noticed that the previous governors were asked to vacate the offices and the ruling dispensation had their own uh, members belonging to their own party and that is not to blame the current dispensation that has happened in previous regimes as well and that is why role of governor has come to the question because they seem to be favoring the in last 10 or 15 years there have been rarely a chance where governors have acted impartially right so there by uh, sorry partition role has often been questioned recently you had a uh, governor in Maharashtra right who had seemingly gave given uh, more time to one party than another than another party belonging to the opposition and, and there as well governor's role was questioned and it was ultimately for the supreme court which came to the opposition's rescue and finally they were able to form the government right so on these occasions role of governors has been questioned that they act in a partition manner because uh, they have been appointed by center in the state and they act as a center's agent and that's why this role of governor because governor is ultimately in control of center right and that's why this is a unitary feature then all india services so in india you do have state services right they do have their own cadre but there are three services uh, this ias ips ifs right so these three uh, people these three category of jobs right uh, are considered all India services so they are appointed by the center right but they are deputed to the states so why they should be called uh, this unitary feature this appointment of all India services because the ultimate control over these people right state can take minor disciplinary actions right they can transfer them but ultimate control ultimate authority with of in regards to termination or some major decision has to be taken by central government right and that's why even while being deputed in state what they are ultimately in control of of union right and that's why this feature as well has been described as 
a unitary feature then no territorial integrity of the state so state's territorial integrity is not guaranteed by indian constitution that can be changed any state can be broken into pieces at any time their names can be changed their boundaries can be changed and that's why because they do not have the territorial sovereignty and that's why this feature has also been recognized as a unitary feature then unequal representation in upper house we already have discussed that how in comparison to us where each state sends uh, two member to the senate irrespective of their geographical size and population how this major feature is missing from indian constitution so you do have states like maharashtra uttar pradesh sending more number of people than uh, goa and manipur then you have flexible con uh, constitution so this uh, rigid constitution we already have read as part of what you call federal feature then there are certain features there are certain provision in indian constitution that can be changed very simply and that by simple majority where state involvement leave aside state involvement only simple majority is required and when when we do have a uh, provisions of constitution that can be amended in a simple way right that can be called nothing but a unitary feature thereafter your center is very strong although this is a contested figure a contested point we'll discuss this so you have a strong center and why center has been called strong because in matters of legislation when you do have that seventh schedule i am referring to you do have sen union list you do have a state list so more number of uh, provisions or more number of uh, entries in cent uh, union list lesser number of entries in state list thereafter concurrent list center or union has overriding power then you do have residuary list where ultimate control lies with uh, center and that's why center has been called uh, what you call strong right emergency power also lies with the center then veto power of the bills so under pursuance of power extended to the governor uh, in article 201 right he can reserve certain types of bills for the president right and president has complete control over those bills that has been reserved by the governor so so president do does have ultimate control that will read when we will we will be reading in chapter governor right there after parliament over state bill so when emergency is imposed or when while exercising power under article 249 if rajya sabha passes a resolution by two third majority two third present and voting right so on that list parliament will become empowered to legislate right uh, so that was the first instance and in cases of emergency again uh, this parliament will be empowered to legislate on the state matters right so parliament over state bills so these many means you do have certain means whatever uh, federal features that had been described by various political scientists so we do have we do stand on those parameters but when you do see these many unitary features and that's why that would have compelled kc bhere to call indian constitution nothing but quasi federal right what would be your answer means you want to claim yourself to be federal with these many unitary features so what would be your answer so my answer from my assessment would be that try to understand again the same political environment in which india got independence there were some peculiar situation in which this india got independence and those peculiar situations were the first that we were completely unitary state when we got independence right so our departure from unitary to federal was all of a sudden right our con for that uh, our constitutional or founder fathers needs to be appreciated that they decided a complete departure from one extreme of continuum to another extreme of continuum right so we departed we decided to depart from completely unitary to a federal nation right thereafter uh, when we got independence many of the state were not willing to join indian union they were hard negotiating right so indian uh, union formation was not through any kind of compact or any kind of agreement that was cited by dr ambedkar so in all these there, there was fragile and unwilling states right so in all these circumstances we were framing our constitution and deciding what our polity is going to be how, how our government is going to uh, look like right and in those circumstances when you are framing your constitution you could not have afforded to be 
completely like completely federal like in united states of america right you could not have afforded those options right you had to have these certain feature which could protect states territorial integrity if we would have given uh, the level of independence to what you call uh, the state that has been given uh, by United States of America, perhaps we would not have remained the way we are today. So, whole of the debate was between this national unity and integrity and then autonomy of the state, right. So, we harmonized finally these two interests. Yes, we recognize that states must be given autonomy, but what, what cost if the state autonomy starts endangering national unity and integrity, sorry. So, if the state autonomy uh, starts endangering national unity and integrity, right, you need to do something, right, and that is why that do something was nothing but the introduction of unitary features. So, unitary features were nothing but a compromise by constitutional father to keep nation our nation united and integral right and you will see we will have discussion on certain features certain unitary features that how uh, these unitary features have evolved over a period of time and how these features have no significance today after 75 plus years of independence right so in portions of uh, so in next slide when we will be discussing growth of federalism in india after independence we will see that how these provisions if not have lost complete significance how these have evolved over a period of time that these cannot be called unitary feature alone right so let, let us discuss to the next slide and let us discuss that how our federalism has evolved a period of time right so if you see role of governor let us discuss it in, in this slide only right so role of governor so whenever uh, yes role of governor has been often subjected to the criticism and you do have various committees and commission that we will discuss in governor chapter that has discussed the mode of appointment of governor that how chief minister should also be consulted how there should be a wide spectrum of political leaders or political participant who should be consulted before appointing governor in any state right how he should be given security of tenure right uh, what should be his mode of removal right so role of governor has always been been a matter of question but recently of late if you see whenever governor has taken any partisan decision or any decision which has remotely been seen to be partisan the opposition party or the victim party has dragged that decision into the supreme court and the impartial supreme court right they have given a decision which is acceptable which has largely been acceptable to every party so when you say that role of governor right and when you do have that active judiciary when you do have that amount of judicial activism in your judiciary right their role is nothing but they are making laughing stock of themselves when they are giving a partial decision because ultimately even they know that their decision is going to be questioned right so this does not have much significance when you say no territorial integrity state boundary change state uh, what you call name change so unless yes center do hold right to do anything but unless there is a wide acceptance whatever happened in jammu kashmir case right there uh, a political status has been demoted uh, from state to union territory then abrogation of certain certain but for that there was a wide agreement across the nation right that that decision has been celebrated by the people right yes there is certain section of society that is feeling cheated today yes uh, we can have a debate on that but as long as in case of telangana uh, before this uh, Jammu and Kashmir in case of Telangana unless Congress government had done that uh, division right so unless there was a wide acceptance for the formation of Telangana unless there were violent movement demanding this formation of Telangana Telangana was not formed right so yes center does have power to change the boundary center does have power to change the name center does have uh, make uh, divide it in pieces but remember we are living in a democratic country and unless any political party will never dare to do anything which does not have a wide acceptance among the people and when there is a wide acceptance you cannot cite it this no territorial integrity as a unitary feature let us take this emergency provision right so emergency provision will take on the next slide because there is some extra data that i have provided 
strong center yes you are calling center strong but with rise of coalition government with rise of regional parties in almost every state in united provinces or uttar pradesh right you do have this sapa baspa in bihar you do have jdu in uh, tamil nadu you do have two major political parties that are ruling national parties has never been able to form means in last 20 years i don't remember that Congress or BJP has ever played any marginal role even in the formation of government, right? Then you do have in Andhra similar condition, Telugu Desham Party, YS, RP, right? Uh, sorry, yes, in Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, yes, Congress and BJP. Then Odisha, Navin Patnayak, his party has been ruling since ages, right? His father ruled, thereafter this uh, Navin Patnayak is ruling, right? Similar condition is in uh, what you call this Jharkhand, similar in Bihar, then in West Bengal you do have this TMC, right? So this centrist party or uh, these major political parties, BJP and Congress, right? They have ruled only in these three or four Hindi heartlands, right? So with rise of my point is that with rise of even if center has more number of uh, legislative matters in center list right with the rise of coalition with rise of these coalition governments in the center although from last 10 years the one party is getting majority but until this uh, 2014 uh, starting from 1980 to 2014 right when you had coalition government never ever center could have taken a decision which goes against interest of any particular state right so if we have to settle if center had to settle any matter with the sri lanka uh, in regard to tamil people of tamil origin right they had to consult people from tamil nadu if we have to take any river agreement with the bangladesh with the sheikh hasina that is still pending if you have an iota of understanding of international relation with Bangladesh, right? We have not been able to favor anything to the Sheikh Hasina, which has remained very favorable to Indian policy, right? And we have not been able to deliver one river agreement because of interest of West Bengal, the TMC ever. Center is willing to have a river agreement on that Farah show, right? But because it is also impacting West Bengal, right? That Mamtadi is not letting that agreement happen, right? So how you do have a strong center? You would have had uh, that CA that has been passed by parliament, right? But uh, these states have referred, many states have passed the resolution against implementation of CA and NPR. So how center could have resorted to article 365 and they could have invoked, center could have invoked, uh, applied precedent rule in these state passing resolution means constitution position. I am saying that if any state uh, fails to or uh, refuses to recognize these parliamentary legislation or implementation of parliamentary that would be considered as failure of constitutional machinery mind you under article 365 and center does have every right to invoke article 356 right but has center done kerala passed it right has center invoked article 365 or 356 no because political environment does not allow it Right? So, where is this strong center? Ayushman Bharat scheme, a scheme related to health scheme that has been refused to be executed by West Bengal government. They say that we do have our own model of this health and that was completely political reason let me tell you. Delhi has refused, uh, Delhi as a state and city has refused to recognize this Ayushman Bharat. Again, if you, uh, if as a state, if you refuse centers, uh, this executive power if you uh, refuse to implement any government scheme, right, center can resort to invoke that article 365, right, and they can uh, have this precedent rule by using 356. But has that happened? Because political environment is not that conducive, right, despite center having power. And you will see that in coming 10 or 15 years, these things will be discussed and these things will be amended. So what we are ultimately, whatever unitary, my point is that whatever unitary features that we do have is either those unitary features are becoming insignificant despite having place in constitution, either they are becoming insignificant or they are going to be amended in next 10 years, right? So federally, we are moving towards a federation that United States has envisioned. 
right so a mature democracy we are moving into right so rest assured we are going to be a good country in near future right so growth of federalism since independence so whatever points are here on this slide we already have discussed role of governor in maharashtra and karnataka case then finally you do have supreme court's intervention and the partial decision that governors had taken those partial decision were upturned and an impartial decision by Supreme Court. So their relevance, governor's relevance completely ended. Then emergency powers, right? So yes, uh, center has emergency powers, precedent rule in regard to uh, precedent rule, but see the pattern and this is the data I was talking about, right? So if you see, uh, this is the timeline from 1953 to 2018. So in between 1960 to 1998 or 2000, you had this long spells of president emergency. This was the long spell in Jammu and Kashmir. This was the long spell in Punjab. Then you would have here intermittent president's rule. But in last 10 years, if you see after 2010, how many president rule, how many instances of president rule in red you can see? So even the implementation or even that president rule, uh, Article 356 invocation, is continuously reducing because even does not matter how strong as a party you are, how majority you are, how brute majority you are enjoying in the parliament. You never resort to these things when environment, when people do not accept, when people, uh, voters are mature, right? And that's why you see that in last 10 years, the instances of uh, president rules in states or in position has continuously reduced and even if center uh, politically motivated center has resorted to any such thing you will see again supreme court coming to the rescue of the victim party right so these were the points that i was discussing right in regards to strong center with the growth of regional party implementation of many parliamentary pass law passed uh, being scorned by the state implementation of ayushman bharat and ca citizenship amendment act refused by many state with emerge emergence of zonal council chief minister conference niti ayog and most importantly regional party center dominance in federal polity has reduced drastically right so whatever blame that we had on unitary features like role of governor emergency power strong center then rising uh, judicial role of supreme court high court judiciary has also reduced center's dominance right so these things their significance is continuously reducing emergence of concept like cooperative federalism that is not the scope of this chapter so cooperative federalism and new federalism has further reduced centers or unions big brotherly attitude right so whatever unions uh, Casey Bhere's argument may be right right but uh, our unitary features means whatever comments that they passed 20 years ago 40 years ago right that does not stand true to all extent, to 100%, right? Let us move to the next slide and let us discuss Ivor Jennings. Means he has given some positive comments, right? So Ivor Jennings, Indian constitution is mainly federal with unique, now we are reading some positive thing about uh, Indian federalism and he says that Indian constitution is mainly federal with unique safeguard for national unity and growth, right? Similar positive compliment has been given on Indian federalism by Dr. Ambedkar. I'm leaving this you for to read it. This is also a positive note on Indian federalism, right? And he will of course give a positive note because he was the constitution maker, right? And he had that big role, right? So I'm leaving. Then factoids that are pending so coming together federation if you remember right we had let it for uh, another slide so let us discuss this coming together federation and holding together federation right that in chapter 2 uh, class 10 has been mentioned by the ncrt so what is this coming together federation so coming together federation is nothing but where weak militarily weak or financially weak states come together and they pool their sovereignty they decide to give certain power certain minimum power to the union like uh, defense like external affairs like finances currency telecommunication so those essential power they give to the union and rest of the power they keep with themselves so that is the case with united states of america's like uh, constitution right that happened in their case uh, in such cases in coming together federation you will see that center or union does have smaller number of power because state here in this case has come together to form the union right so in that case state will give them only minimum number of powers or minimum number of subject to legislate on they'll keep more number of power to themselves 
देर आफ्टर होल्डिंग टूगेदर फेडरेशन सो इन दिस केस यू कैन पुट Canada, you can put India. Where for administrative convenience, you were a unitary state, but for administrative convenience or for uh, fulfilling the demands of the people, uh, their aspiration, what you do is that you make autonomous units, uh, autonomous political units at lower level. You give them certain parts, right? And that has happened in Indian case. So Indian case and. Canadian case is example of holding together federation. In this case, you will see that union because union has given them power. So as long as there would not be strong demand of something, right? Uh, they will not shed their power. They will not shed uh, cede their territory, right? So in this case, holding together type of federation, you will see that union will have more number of power as opposed to in this case where uh, state had more powers, right? So this was about. coming together federation and holding together federation then indian federal polity has driven its inspiration from canadian constitution because canadian constitution two envisions a strong center right uh, mode of appointment of governor if you see right a mode of appointment of governor has also been taken from canadian constitution so these were two factoids factoids which could not be accommodated in that slide right so with this we are wrapping up this lecture right this is actually a pictorial representation of a uh, different kind of government across the globe so uh, we already have discussed this right so this in green right these are federal polities and this in blue these are unitary polities right there after mcq so there are seven mcqs just pause the video i am just giving you a glimpse so pause the video attempt it pause the video attempt it so this is the first question this is second question this is third question this is fourth fifth sixth and seventh right so these are the seven question that i expect you to attempt so until i come up with the next lecture make sure that you have revised this chapter you have read this chapter and responded to all these question till then bye bye good night